Welcome back to r slash just no HOA, where people share stories about their crazy homeowner associations that make us feel better about not living in an HOA. And in case you are new around here, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to join our awesome community. Without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one was posted by user OutsideExcitement689 on r slash ripe stories and it is titled Face to face goes full nuke. Kind of a long read, this happened several years ago but I thought I would share as I recently ran across the YouTube channel and thought why not. The previous homeowner never did maintenance on the back deck and I struggled for years trying to avoid replacing the deck, an 18x16 plus 17x9 hot tub area. After years I gave up and planned on replacing it, I put together the plans just holding off until the summer sales on materials as I was going to replace the wood deck with a brick slash retaining wall blocks. Replace being the keyword, in the late spring slash early summer I received a letter from the new property management company MC stating that I had to repair or replace my deck and they gave me 30 days. Now the letter was not from the HOA but the PMC, in my state HOAs that have over so many homes are required by law to have a PMC. After the PMC's letter I tore out the old wood deck completely, I marked the lines where the old deck was and started digging trenches for the replacement deck. A few days later the retaining blocks arrived. They matched my landscaping in color and style, awesome herringbone design deck floor with built in seats along the sides. It was the same size and height as the original deck to within a quarter inch. Two of the HOA members even stopped by and had a beer with me on it a few days after I completed it, one HOA member even took the pallets for the blocks and bricks for one of his projects. Now comes the trouble, the PMC sent me a letter that I didn't fill out the request to build a new deck and gave me the option of tearing it out, submitting the proper paperwork and then if approved I can build a new deck or face fines. I still had their letter stating that I had to repair or replace my deck and that I decided to replace it. I emailed them explaining my actions and a copy of their letter with the word to replace highlighted. Next letter was a fine at twice the normal rate. I tried to call the PMC multiple times with no answers. I sent them an email included a read receipt this time containing their letter requesting they call me. I never received a read receipt that they read it nor a call. About a week later another fine that was doubled, I went to the HOA board meeting which 99% of the time are really laid back social club and chatty type with drinks, adult and non-adult, so I brought up my issue and not one member admitted to having any idea why I got the letters of fines. Four of the five members were new, three months on the board, only the treasurer was not new. He had been there a few years, also the PMC was changed about the same time of the elections. The treasurer had the attitude of pay the fines and do what the PMC says. I didn't agree. Well, a few days later I get another letter with more fines but this time the fines were higher than allowed by the bylaws. With no response from the PMC I went to the city and requested a dated copy of the bylaws. Turns out they were the same ones I had. Those of you that read the HOA horror stories all know those are the ones that are legal. I emailed the PMC stating the fines are excess and I was following their letter to repair or replace my deck. Still no read receipt, about 10 days later I get another letter and fines have gone up again. I don't respond as they don't want to talk to me, then I want to meet face to face. The PMC is required by the bylaws to attend HOA meetings at least every other month and a minimum of 6 times a year. A week prior I contacted the HOA president and treasurer to ensure they would be there and not be in breach of the bylaws that would void their contract. Well a few days later I got a couple of read receipts from the emails I had sent to the PMC. The day before the HOA meeting I get another letter and fines are now $1600 a week with a total north of $4,000. The bylaws on file with the city state maximum fine of $400 per 10 day period even with multiple violations can be levied against a single property. Revenge plan is put into place, I went around the neighbors of whom many are friends and explained what was going on and requested they attend the HOA meeting. 
I am the neighbor that helps out everyone, I shovel drives of the elderly or sick neighbors, mow your grass if it is getting long and you are ill, injured or elderly, pull in your trash can so the PMC doesn't find you, let you borrow tools for home repair and will help time permitting, I will chat with anyone on anything. So getting people to the meeting was not an issue, usually 40 to 50 people attend but this meeting was standing room only with over 200 people. When the president opens the meeting, I stood up to be recognized. First thing I did was introduce a friend who handed the PMC his real estate attorney's business card and puts a voice recorder on the front table. I stated my case about my deck, read the first letter about remove or replace my deck. Even showed how the PMC didn't read any of my emails until a few days prior nor answered any calls. The PMC only responded that I was in violation of the bylaws for a new deck while holding up a copy of bylaws. He read a few lines of how I was in violation, I asked to see his copy as I didn't remember that in the bylaws, I looked and stated that these are not dated nor signed by the president or vice president of the HOA nor are they notarized all requirements by the city, ask my attorney friend if that was legal, to which he replied, they wouldn't hold up for two seconds in the court of law. Then I asked the crowd if anyone had seen or voted for them. According to the bylaws on file with the city, two thirds of the homes had to agree to them and then they had to be filed with the city with the votes. Not one person had seen the new bylaws nor voted for them, this pissed off many and the crowd started to get loud towards the PMC. Personally, knowing three quarters of the room, I asked for everyone to calm down so I could settle my business. So my lawyer friend handed the PMC a copy of the legal bylaws on file with the city, I had them turn to page 28 and read out loud the highlighted part. It read, it is not necessary to submit a modification request if the homeowner is only replacing a like object for a like object of the same dimensions. As an example, flower bed for a flower bed or patio deck for a patio deck. The PMC stated that I didn't know the entire bylaws and my deck replacement was not following the spirit of the bylaws because I changed the material. The bylaws don't mention materials used, just size. I chuckled when they said I didn't know the bylaw or the spirit of the bylaws, several others in the crowd who have known me for years also laughed. At this point I instantly knew they never read the legal bylaws. How, you ask? Well, wanting to embarrass the PMC in front of everyone, I had the PMC turn to page 81 and read the co-authors of the bylaws out loud. They turned to the page but hesitated for 10 to 15 seconds and then read them softly. I asked them to read it out loud, the three co-authors of the legal bylaws, the attorney I introduced at the beginning, the HOA president at the time, he was in the room sitting behind me and myself as the vice president at that time. Now for the face to face revenge. Then I had them turn to page 74 and read the highlighted area, basically it stated if two thirds of the homeowners believe the PMC is not acting with the good of the community in mind, all contracts with the PMC are null and void. When they finished reading while looking straight at them, I asked the HOA president to take a vote to void all contracts the PMC as I didn't believe they are acting with the good of the community in mind because they are using excess fines, four times maximum allowed by the bylaws, using illegal bylaws no one saw voted on or filed with the city and did not respond in a timely manner to correspondence. Also the bylaws state they have three business days to respond. The HOA president nodded, called a vote, 196 yeah votes and two no votes. With that the PMC was escorted off the property and the contract void. We had some legal stuff to do in court afterwards to make it legal, we only needed 159 votes. At this point I was happy and it was over for me, I have my deck and no fines, but then it starts to go nuclear. Going up in flames, a few weeks after the HOA meeting, we found out the HOA's treasurer's cousin owned the PMC and he snuck them in during the transition. PMC was a family business in the sense only family members worked there, the community found out about the treasurer dealings and within a month he sold his house and moved. He was upside down in his mortgage and took a huge loss. 
Full nuke, my lawyer friend checked with other HOAs and found out the PMC was pulling the same stuff on several of them. I don't know the details of everything, but the PMC lost their license to practice in the state, some members did jail time, the PMC had to repay excess fines and court costs and the PMC went bankrupt, multiple family members lost their jobs, my lawyer friend made a lot of money helping the other HOAs. And ripe stars, if you have any interesting stories to share of your own, then please head over to r slash ripe stories on reddit and post your own story there. If the story is interesting, there is a good chance that I might read it in a video. In addition, if you have watched until here and enjoy my stories, please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support me. Thank you very much. FHOA, it's almost therapeutic to send them my response letter every year. So two years ago I bought a condo. Every summer I guess they do exterior inspections and send you a letter telling you that you have three days to fix it. Last year they did not like my hanging lights on my patio nor my hanging hammock. I supposedly was not allowed to hang anything from communal property. I also had to repair the deck boards around my patio and repaint the concrete patio floor. Well, I did not get this letter until a week after the deadline. The day after I got that letter, I found my hammock and lights had all been unscrewed and removed and thrown on the patio floor. They also pulled out a bird's nest that was on the same beam and threw it into the patch of grass, killing the birds. However, they did leave my security camera alone. The camera is placed in such a way you can only see it once you are already on the patio. I have footage of them doing all this in the early hours of the morning. The look of oh crap when they realized there was a camera was priceless. I don't think it was actual members of the HOA, probably a couple of the maintenance guys that they contract with. I wrote a letter in response. My points were clear, first you cannot claim my patio is communal property. I'm sure if I went around sitting on everybody's patio, they would have an issue with it. Also, even if it was communal property, then you cannot require me to put my own finances into repairing it. But the point stands. Many people have hanging flowers or wind chimes. If my lights and hammock are an issue, I expect that those would be as well. And lastly, I have security footage of their workers tampering with my private property. And if they ever come anywhere near my home again without warning or explanation, I will come down on them with legal force the likes of which they have never seen. Animal Control was already reviewing the footage of the bird's nest to see if any animal cruelty had been committed. Sadly, there was not enough to press charges of cruelty. I did not receive any response, but within days a notice went out to the neighborhood that they would be replacing all the first floor patio railing with taller, privacy style plastic fencing. After they replaced my patio, I put my hammock and lights back up and have not heard anything about it since. This year? Not a word about my patio. However, now they have a problem with my front door, which somehow was not an issue last year, my doorbell was loose off the wall. Also, I guess we are supposed to have polished brass front door fixtures and I have brushed nickel. My response? I explained that I did try to tighten the screws of the doorbell, but the dry wall had disintegrated around it. Now, according to the bylaws, we can get in trouble for doing any permanent alterations to the hallway. I explained to them I was not comfortable speckling and repairing the dry wall, as that would be a permanent alteration, as far as the door fixtures go. I wrote in my letter how two years ago I renovated my unit, including getting all new matching fixtures. Polished brass has not been in style for years, which is why I replaced my whole home interior with brushed nickel. Homes with polished brass or mismatched fixtures resell for less. My doorknob extends through the door onto my private property. I told them I was not willing to lower the value of my home for their pointless rule based on outdated aesthetics. I should also note that it's all indoor front doors and I'm the only unit on my floor so there was nothing mismatching. That was two months ago and I have not heard anything back nor has anyone come and tried to remove my doorknob. I'm starting to love arguing with them, I wonder what they will find next year. HOA sent me a deed restriction notice that is not an actual violation. 
I got two dairy goats three weeks ago when we bought the house they did not give us the whole 11 pages CCRs, it was a one page blurb without any info to find out what the whole thing was. Fast forward two and a half years. I bought two dairy goats, size of large dogs and much quieter. After the first 24 hours of bringing them home, I get a visit from the constables. After some confusion, if I call to complain about goats in my backyard, we determined that it was not illegal for me to have goats in my backyard because I live in the county and if there was an issue, it was an HOA issue and they could not enforce it anyway. The next week comes, when I come home from work, there is a notice to call the SPCA. I call and leave a message. In the meantime, I spend two hours online trying to find our complete HOA rules. Next day, the investigator calls, says the complaint is about no water for the goats and eye infections not being treated. First, they had two containers of water in case one failed or got dirty. Second, no eye infections at all. But this information told me who called in the complaint, who is my friendly neighbor, because the water container had a hole in it. So I sent the pictures to prove the animals had water and were not sick. So the next week my HOA sent me a letter saying that I was in violation of having livestock but my HOA actually does not have rules about any animals. I asked them what subsection I violated. I was on hold for 5 to 10 minutes, she comes back on the line. I'm not able to find it at this moment. Can I get your contact information and I will send it to you. Me? Okay, give them my information. So I see here I need to contest this at the next board meeting. Please set that up. Secretary. Oh yes ma'am, I will have the president contact you. Well, it has been six days, no contract. The next thing she said was, Well, it was not something we observed, but a neighbor complained. I asked if they bothered to look at the HOA guidelines before sending out the letter. And if not, why am I getting a violation? You know, in the end, HOAs just love sending out letters even if you did not actually violate any of their rules. If you guys live under an HOA, what was the silliest violation they have ever tried to fine you for? Let us know in the comments. HOA has banned guns, I'm bulk buying popcorn for this one. Edit, this got kinda popular, don't really wanna say where I am, but the state does have pretty tight gun control laws already, maybe why the board thought they would get away with this. I'm not really a gun person, I just thought this decision was super effing dumb and worth sharing over how overreaching the HOA want to be. Some residents who are gun people are apparently all over the situation, re, proper legal response etc. The letters only turned up yesterday, but I cannot imagine it will take very long for the HOA to back down. I will post an update if I hear anything. In the meantime, I need to catch up on sleep, as I've been up about 30 hours now, thanks to double pay for overtime shifts. Might use the paycheck to buy a gun. So, after some sort of secret HOA meeting last week, the board has sent letters to everyone in my neighborhood, stating that the possession of assault weapons, concealed firearms, NFA controlled items and ammunition of military calibers is not permitted within neighborhood under all circumstances and without exception. It also says, firearms must not be loaded or discharged in or in the vicinity of neighborhood for any reason whatsoever. I guess it's open season for home invasion. Gun control is already pretty tight here, so half of it would be a felony anyway. But some residents have already contacted pro-gun groups and a don't tread on me flag has gone up outside one house. I cannot wait to see the board's reaction to it. They've been getting steadily more crazy. Thankfully, my lease is up in January, so I'm out of here. And ripe stars, unfortunately we have already reached the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed the content. However, if you cannot wait for more ripe content, then I suggest you head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube, where you can find more exclusive Reddit content read by me. Patreon subscriptions start at just $1 per month and for $1 your name will show up at the end of each of my new videos. However, if you are willing to spend $3 per month, you will get access to more than 50 exclusive Reddit videos, mostly just no mother-in-law stories. However, please understand I don't want to pressure anyone into spending money because I am already incredibly grateful that you watch my videos every single day. 
Thank you so much for your daily support. It really means the world to me. And I hope to see you again tomorrow for the next video.